Well, good day to you again, YouTube. This is Murray from CarterCutlery.com, and I wanted to give you a quick explanation of my take on convex edges. Convex edges. And we have, uh, in your mind, you can picture a hollow ground knife that has kind of a hollows in the secondary edge like this. We have flat ground knives, which obviously are flat surfaces, and then we have uh, what people consider a convex edge, or a canal edge, or a moran edge, or an apple seed edge. These are all uh, different terms for basically the same edge, where the steel comes down and then in a gentle arc comes down to an, a cutting edge. So I understand there are some manufacturers who produce convex edges, and they uh, are marketed as being an extremely strong edge within any given you know, blade thickness, a convex edge is going to be stronger and uh, they're kind of viewed as being a good option for a combat knife or a survival knife or a knife that you might be batoning wood through or something like that. So they have very elaborate systems for how to uh, sharpen convex edges. Uh, one friend of mine, he, uh, he puts different grits of sandpaper on a computer mouse pad which is kind of spongy and has some give to it and he's going to kind of push his knife on that pad and strop backwards and that's one way to sharpen a convex edge. Uh, myself personally because I sharpen, we're going to pen down here to the stones, because I sharpen all of my knives by hand, as a matter of fact all my edges are convex by default. Now the reason is is that when I'm sharpening freehand there's always going to be, even though I attempt to limit it, there's always going to be some indiscriminate rocking in this wrist and in this hand and in the blade as I'm sharpening. So in reality, every stroke I take on the stone, I'm getting different facets of uh, grinding occurring on the edge. And that occurs with both sides when you freehand. Now we, we attempt to kind of limit that factor a little bit when we strop backwards because we're really trying to kind of keep a nice consistent angle but even then you can't there's no way you can humanly follow two strokes on a stone uh, and get them exactly at the same angle each time so by default my edges become slightly convex and to that degree let me say that when you're sharpening if there is a little bit of rocking in your wrist which there is for everybody it's better to be too low and adjusted perfectly and be within that range rather than be adjusted perfectly and too high in your range. So that's why I always encourage all of my students to sharpen their primary edges at the lowest angle they feel that they can do it. If my students are getting scratches on the secondary edge while they're attempting to sharpen the primary edge, and I say that that's the, the right mindset, that's the right frame of reference. And so they'll get a nice, they'll have a convex edge, but it'll be very subtle and still very acute. Okay, so sharpening freehand by the technique that I teach will result in very minor convex edges, which will still cut with uh, great keenness, but be fairly strong and robust as well, although that's also a function of the metallurgy in the blade. Now, what would you do if you wanted to reproduce the edge geometry on one of those thicker or fatter kind of survival knives with convex edges? Well, what I would recommend you do in that case uh, is when you're at your 1000 grit or your rough sharpening stone, essentially what you need to do is polish all the different angles, the different facets of that blade. And it will look like uh, as you're sharpening, you're going to sharpen kind of up on the close to the primary edge and then sharpen behind that and lower it again and sharpen behind that and lower it again and sharpen behind that and lower it again and sharpen behind that. Now the trick is, and this is what I teach in all of my bladesmithing classes which make them so worthwhile and such a great value, is then what you need to do is look Get yourself a good source of light. Natural light's always better. Look and see what am I doing with that stone? What effect has the stone had on that convex edge that I just ground? Oh, 
I need to sharpen more right there. I can see I got here and here, but not there. So you go back to your stone and you try to work that part that you missed. And what do you do next? You go and you look again. So this is a constant process of examining with your eyes, going back to work. Examining with your eyes again, the results going back to work. And you'll be able to figure out how you can grind and maintain and preserve that same edge geometry that came with your knife if you're satisfied with that kind of edge geometry to begin with. My guess is that 90%, 95% of the knives in North America are overbuilt and too thick down towards the cutting edge. And that's why no one's really fully satisfied with the way they cut. So my assumption is always with my students and with when I sharpen is, you know, sharpen it a little bit thinner than you think it needs to be and be satisfied with the way it cuts. Then through constant observation of this edge that you just labored to obtain, watch if your edge is starting to show signs of failure if you sharpened it too thin. And then you can go back and beef it up back again simply and quickly if you need to. So that's my take on convex edges. They can be minorly convex like most of my edges are or any edge that's sharp and freehand or they can be uh, overtly convex like some of those, uh, you know, like uh, Cold Steel, Recon Tonto, or uh, Trail Master, or something like that. They have, you know, very, very thick convex edges. And as I mentioned, you can do that with careful sharpening and careful observation. Okay, so my name is Murray Carter from cartercutlery.com. See you next time.